Welcome to Facts TV News, where everything is true. Stepdad sentenced to life in prison for killing child after mom ended relationship. Arches Rose, 42, has been sentenced to life in prison for a 2020 murder of his one-time stepson, Galen Buchanan, 8 years old. Rose is to serve 27 years and 10 months before he becomes eligible for parole. He confessed to the murder after the child's mother ended their relationship. Rose had eight previous convictions. Justice and Marie, Lawrence Granger, in handing down the sentence in the Home Circuit Court, said the initial sentence was 34 years to life. However, she granted a 10% discount and deducted a further two years and two months for time already served in prison. The judge said Rose did not deserve a 50% discount although he had pleaded guilty at the first relevant date and described what he did as a sitting-in. Galen's body, with its hand bound, was found on January 23, 2020 in the Kingston Harbour two days after he went missing from his father's home. The youngster's mother, Tara Lewis, had ended an eight-month relationship with Rose shortly before the boy went missing. Rose reportedly tried to strangle Lewis before they broke up. He claimed he was left devastatingly heartbroken and took out his revenge on Louis Sand after he was encouraged by his co-workers. Son of Slain Reformed Dan Fighting Against Crime When Reverend Howard Nelson was six years old, his father put a gun in his hand and let him pull the trigger during a New Year's salute. His father said the man who now shepherd members of Lilliput New Testament Church of God in Montego Bay was a don. When Reverend Nelson was 10, his father, who grew up in Kingston's tough inner city community Rima and Jarrett Lane in Mountain View, was condoned by cronies who were unhappy with his decision to leave behind his life of crime. Nelson's God-fearing mother was left with five children, four boys and a girl to care for. Two years after his father was killed, his uncle tried to give Nelson and his older brother guns. Your father gone, you know, and now you know the high school. Anybody this you know, come tell me, let me deal with it, or you know, deal with it on yourself. His late father's brother told the teenagers, but the boys refused to take the weapons. After two years of living through several wars in his community, 14-year-old Nelson decided he had had enough. The tipping point were seeing his arms, cousin and uncles on the streets protecting the community while the don was tucked away in bed, he decided his life would be different. Today, he is a man of the cloth, lending his voice to the fight against violence. Nelson shared his story during Thursday's launch of the security summit to be hosted by the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industry from April 6 to 7. Director of Communications, from Berlin formerly Guardman Group, George Overton, and National Security Minister Dr. Horace Strong are slated to address the forum. The summit, which was launched at Grand View Hotel in St. James, is themed Collective Security, Unity in Action. It will be held at the Montego Bay Conference Center in St. James. The MBCCI decided it was action time, no time for more talk, said MBCCI President Janet Silvera, in explaining the reason for the event. For us as a nation, to truly be free, we need to be able to walk our streets, sleep in our beds, go to school, sit in our living room and comb our hair without fear of our lives being prematurely taken from us. And this freedom, this security, needs to be for all citizens of Jamaica, no matter our skin color or financial status, she added. Silvera is of the view that, while the country has had several discussions on how to solve the crime problem, numerous rounds of social intervention that have been effective, declarations of state of public emergency, zones of special operation, the country remains unsafe for many Jamaicans. The problem, she added, is not just one that needs to be solved by the state, but needs input from citizens. The Security Summit is to highlight the importance of all of us working together to guarantee the safety and security of all Jamaica, young and old, rich and poor. To break down the invisible walls that exist between our uptown and downtown communities for persons living on the other side of the wall to share with us their version of the story. To share with us their lives, their struggles and how sons and sometimes daughters 
fall prey to being recruited in gangs and engaging in actions of criminality, said Silverio. Once this wall is broken down and we all understand what makes a criminal, then we as a people can work together to reshape our communities to no longer create criminals, she added. Crime disrupting night to garbage collection in Maypen. Regional Operations Manager for the Southern Parks and Market SPM Waste Management Edward Muir says the prevalence of crime in his south central town is affecting the removal of solid waste. On Tuesday, Muir told reporters that workers are fearful to clear garbage in Maypen Town Centre nightly. Because of the high number of crimes, we had to move away from the night collection and focus on early morning, he said. Muir said the change was implemented there because of the environment. It is not safe for our crew to clean Maypen Town Centre during the night, he said. SPM, a subsidiary of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, is responsible for cleaning solid waste in Manchester, Clarendon and St. Elizabeth. Further, Muir said the violence in Maypen Town Centre and its environment affects the agency turn around time. It slows on the operation in Maypen and surrounding areas because if we are able to do night collection, we could have done so during the night and then do residential during the day, he said. The security risk has resulted in a delay of garbage being collected. We start cleaning Maypen from as early as 5 o'clock, said Muir. He said the agency sought assistance from the Maypen police. We had a meeting with the police in Maypen, however, they have their own challenge in terms of resources to clean the market, the bus park and the town centre. We're looking at no less than 10 to 14 hours. You know, that would be a long time to ask for assistance from them every night, he said. The SMP does not have a disposable site in Clarendon, resulting in all the solid waste collected in the parish being transported to the Martin Hill dump in Manchester. Tufton encourages men to boss up for prostate cancer screening. With prostate cancer being the leading cause of death among Jamaican men in the cancer category, more males are being encouraged to have regular checks for abnormalities in the prostate. Speaking at the Michael Health Center in Manchester on Wednesday, Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton said men need to understand the risk associated with prostate cancer such as erectile dysfunction. The best way to examine it is to do your blood work, but that only gives you part of the sign that may be a problem. It is a warning sign. The best examination is the insertion. It is important because in Jamaica, prostate cancer is the leading cause of death in our men among the cancer category, he said. If you don't treat it, it will eventually create a problem that can lead to death. It could eventually lead to a problem we have to go to surgery and you have to cut it or take it out, he added. Dr. Tufton said the ministry's drive to encourage prostate checks fall under its boss man campaign, which targets men for annual screening for the cancer and to change their perception of medical care. Unfortunately, more men decide not to go to the doctor until they are sick. We need more women to go to, but men in particular have a tendency that they must not see a doctor unless they are sick, said Tufton. As a matter of fact, the culture suggests that even when they are sick, they still are not going to the doctor. They turn to the bush doctor, he added. He said the mindset has been evolving, but there are still challenges in getting some men to boss up. Because what we have found is that our cultural tendencies and behavior in our Jamaican context, which has evolved over time, is that as men, we are expected to be the kind of macho people, he said. He said there is a strong perception among people that men don't need to get regular checkups. The truth is, it has not served us well because when you look at the sick profile of our population and our men, and to put it simply how we live over time and how we eventually become ill and eventually can't do the things we would like to do anymore because we lose the strength, he said. A lot of time, if we took the time to go to the doctor, to the health center and have the doctor examine us, when we feel strong, we would be able to see signs of sickness and be able to correct it before it becomes too late, he added. He said bad dietary choices and lifestyle habits have dire consequences. He added that the consequences can be mitigated once there is early medical intervention. 
8% of Jamaicans die because of the lifestyle that they live. The consumption of salt, sugar fats, alcohol, tobacco, and so we need to get guidance from the doctor, said Dr. Tufton. Tourism Ministry tries to train its way out of labor shortage. Faced with a shortage of trained workers and a boom expected in the local hospitality industry over the next three years, the Tourism Minister is offering free certification courses as it pulls out all the stops to find a way out of the problem. The course is being offered by the Jamaica Center of Tourism Innovation, JCTI, a division of the Tourism Enhancement Fund, TEF, target to youngsters who wish to pursue a profession in the sector, said JCTI Director Carol Rose Brown. Our country is set to add 15,000 hotel rooms. You may not know this, but Trelawney is about to become the part with the greatest number of hotel rooms in Jamaica. We have to find people to work in these hotels, she said during the Tourism Production Development Company Limited, Youth Expo at Montego Bay Conventional Center on March 29. The current shortage of workers is an indication of our need for new trained, certified people ready to get into the sector, she added. Addressing secondary and tertiary hospitality and tourism students studying in St. James, Rosebond said, these new developments will require workers from all sectors coming together in the tourism industry. The rapid development of accommodation sector requires a whole array of people. We need engineers, architects, accountants, people who understand environmental science to manage our beachfronts, said the director. Underscoring the importance of these certification courses, Roseborn encouraged both high school and tertiary level students to take advantage of this opportunity to become well-trained hospitality workers. We really want to invite you to join what we believe is the biggest industry on the planet. There are opportunities all around the world. These certifications are not only valid in Jamaica, but they are transferable, she added. If you are a college student, please speak to your department head. The certification is available to you free of cost, and we're doing this because we want to ensure that there is a ready, trained, certified population ready to deliver on the promise of Brand Jamaica. If you are interested in being a chef, speak to the department's head and say, I am interested in joining the next herd of candidates waiting to be a chef, she added. If you are a high school student, speak to your guidance counselor and indicate that you would like to do hospitality and tourism program from the TEF. Ask your department's head to contact us at the JCTI Rose Brown stated. Principals urge to craft programs to aid struggling students. School leaders are being encouraged to implement programs and initiatives to support students, particularly those who are facing challenges in their academic journey. Minister of Education and Youth Favel Williams, in making the call, said that while the government continues to roll out programs to support students in a targeted manner, it's not simply about individual programs. It's about the culture of care and inclusivity we must instill in our school. This is an era where our current and future principals play such an important role, she pointed out. You can bring together the diverse programs within the school innovatively and currently for the holistic development of every child. You can also ensure that the school resources are appropriately allocated to the students with greater needs. Minister Williams was addressing the virtual graduation ceremony for 96 participants in Cohort 7 of the National College of Education Leadership and Cell Aspiring Principals Program. The year-long trained program aims to equip aspiring principals with the skills and competencies to assume leadership roles in the nation's schools. Minister Williams, in commenting the participant, noted that principals can provide a good opportunity for most students to be developed in their full potential regardless of their starting point or learning needs. We want all our schools to focus on this in an effective, sustained, and innovative manner, she stated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.